Today Happy is birthday. is uh, April 29th, and it's all of your birthdays today. And if anybody else who's watching this is your birthday today, well, happy birthday to you as well. well thank you. So we have Not a my birthday. we have a list of uh, all the famous people we could find who shared your birthday, and uh, a bunch of historical things that happen on this day. And uh, starting off with uh, with Azurina, she's going to be doing uh, the birthdays. Okay, we first up we have Catherine Langford, 28. <clears throat> Darn it. Should I say it in that order? Should I say the age first? Up to you. Sure. Catherine Langford, a star of Netflix original series 13 Reason Why. Uh, in the role of Hannah Baker, she was cast in the lead role of the 2017 film The Misguided as well as had notable roles in the films Love, Simon, and Knives Out. Ooh, we saw Knives Out. That was a good Yeah, one. she was uh, the uh, the youngest daughter, yeah. I believe, of the of the family. Yeah, she turns 28 today. Whoops, I guess I should have had this ready. There you go. There we go. Then we have, uh, oh no, Zorin Korak, Korach? Oh, I, my apologies to Zorin. Zorin Korach. All right. Uh, most recognized for his recurring role in the series Sam and Cat as Groomer. Uh, a Goomer, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no. I, I, said, okay, I thought he was, I honestly thought he was like a, a pet groomer. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, hey, there's Cat in the title. Yeah. You were set up for that one. He, he has appeared in other notable series such as Graceland, Justified, Shameless, True Blood, and Bones. He had an early role in 2003 in Days of Our Lives. He turns 38 today. You know, um, uh, the guy plays Dean Winchester, uh, uh, Jensen Ackles, mm -hmm. I also had a, a stint on Days of Our Lives. Oh. That's actually how I first saw him. Ah, nice. And then when he was on the show, when I saw Supernatural, I was like, hey, he's from Days of Our Lives. And they even referenced it in the show once. All right. Uh, oh, yep. Yeah, Megan Boone. She's best known for her role as an FBI agent and profiler. Elizabeth Keene on the NBC drama series The Blacklist. She had a reoccurring role in Law & Order LA because everybody's been in that uh, Law & Order show. <laughs> well, this and, is a recurring role, not just uh, one done. True, true. And uh, an episodic appearance in Blue Bloods. Oh, my mom used to love that show. Um, I think I had, did I have Tom Selleck in it? Yes. She appeared in films such as My Bloody Valentine 3D. Starring Jensen Ackles. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! it all together. Yeah, and Step Up Revolution uh, in 2012. She turns 41 today. Oh my goodness, this is a favorite, I think, of both of ours. Like, he's high up on the list. Oh yeah. Uh, Tyler Labine is uh, best known for a starring role in television series uh, Breaker High, Invasion. Reaper and Woo! oh my gosh, Reaper! Deadbeat! Deadbeat was great. A Hulu show. Was I love Reaper. Oh, I wish that show kept, got, got another season. Yeah, yeah. One more. I, <laughs> I feel the same way about Deadbeat. He is he was wonderful in that show. Does not get enough credit. And Dr. Iggy Fromm, uh, head of psychiatry in a, in the NBC medical drama New Amsterdam, and of course the film. One of his. He's been. Uh, I, I He's mean, been in a lot of films, but this this one, Tucker and Dale versus Evil, great movie. If you haven't seen oh. it yet, go see it. I I don't know if I've seen it more than five times. You don't know if you've seen it more than five times. I don't know. I've seen it a lot of times. I lost count. I love it. Okay. It's so good. Watch it. It also has uh, Alan Tudyk in it. So. Yes. Um, uh, Mike Hogan, bassist of the Cranberries, is fifty-one. Best known for their song. Zombie. How's that Z song go? Uh, zombie, 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 eh, eh, in my head, in my head, zombie. <laughs> I, I don't even know. I, I probably messed up a bunch of words. <laughs> Did they say zombie in that song? No. <laughs> oh my gosh, she looks so great in this picture. Uma Thurman from Pulp Fiction, Kill Bill, Batman and Robin. <laughs> She was uh, Poison Ivy in that. Gattaca, yeah, that was an okay movie. Uh, Les Miserables, uh, of course, one of the many uh, the cinematic adaptations. Paycheck, ooh, I saw a bootleg of that. <laughs> uh, I, I still want to show you the uh, the actual yeah. movie of that. Oh, my, I left the years out. Batman and Robin was 97. Eh, you don't need Gattaca, to. Gattaca, okay. Uh, the Producers, 2000, in 2005. 
and my super ex girlfriend in 2006 when yeah. she was dating uh was it uh, Jason Bateman's character was I it? believe. Uh, are you sure they're not mixing no. up uh, Hancock with that one? I feel like uh, I, I feel like I am because I don't think that was him. But anyway, I feel like uh, him. Uh, but she turns 54. Yeah, I, I was tempted to leave that last one off, but I was like, yeah, you know what? Why not? Yeah, super, my super ex girlfriend. Yeah, I, okay. liked, I liked it. There's all she threw a shark in yeah. the window. My uh, Batman and Robin is one of those movies where uh, a lot of people say it was horrible. It was. Yeah, it's like I like that movie. It was a terrible movie. It was fun. But yes, it was fun. I'll concede to that point. I had fun like, watching I was a, it. I was a kid. I was uh, was at uh, yeah. I was 11 at the time. That one. That movie was made for me. I was, um, gosh, I was going into college gosh. when I saw that. You and, sure? Wait, is the last one? Wait, what year was it? 97. This? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, that was my uh, first year of college. Okay, um, you're making and... our age gap seem a little bit higher yeah. than I thought it was. But... Yeah, yeah. Hey, how next, uh, next person here. <laughs> All right, uh, Master P, uh, rapper. Oh, like you, like you didn't know. Friggin' Master P. Uh, rapper, founder of No Limit Records, who also played for the NBA, Charlotte Hornets, and the Toronto Raptors. I gotta be honest, I did not know that right? he played for those teams, especially the Toronto Raptors. I, I thought that was pretty uh, interesting. It's it like I had to include that. But yes, he turns, uh, he turns 54 today. And sorry for the notification if you have yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, have I'll those. just go ahead there, and then, uh, gosh, that's wild. I actually said that a Toronto Raptor hat when they became a new team. Um, Paul uh, Adelstein, uh, he, or is it Adelstein? I don't know. Uh, leave angry comments down below. Uh, he is <laughs> known as comments. Agent Paul Kellerman on Prison Break and as a pediatrician Cooper Freeman and private practice supporting roles in Intolerable Cruelty and Memoirs of a Geisha. Recurring role as Leo Bergen and, or Bergen, on Scandal, and as Jake Novak on Girlfriend's Guide to Divorce. He co-created the dark comedy TV series Imposters, where he also played the role of Shelley Cohen. Interesting. He turns 55 today. Carney Wilson, singer for the band Wilson Phillips, is 56. Oh my goodness, and we all know their song, Hold On. It's one of my favorite uh, 80s songs. Um... I used to I used to listen. That was one of my dreams was to perform some dance number to it on stage. But Why don't uh, you? let's see. Uh, perform it. Sing some. <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> don't you know that there is pain? But you hold on for one more day and break free, break from the chain. <laughs> Someday somebody's gonna make you wanna turn around and say goodbye. Okay, I yeah. recognize that Till part. Then, okay. baby, are you gonna let them hold them down to make you cry? Don't you know? Don't you know? Things will change. Things will go your way if you hold on. <laughs> For what? <laughs> okay. Also, uh, uh, there's a little bit more we just learned about her as well. They they were furry for a moment. Oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. They were on the Mass Singer and they got to wear the whole band got to wear uh, furry costumes. It was pretty nice, and she actually specifically mentioned performing in it, and I'm like she got a little taste. I mean. Not a lot, but she got a little taste. <laughs> also, they're, they're still looking good. Oh, yes, they are. I thought I, mean, I expected uh, them to really show their age, but they look gorgeous. For, how old are, did we say uh, this one was? Oh, uh, she's 56. So, yeah, 56 and still looking good. Yes, it is amazing. I'm so happy that they're all at least able to feign that they like each other. Ah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you, know, you know, people get older. Yeah, they, yeah. They, all right. But, uh, and Vincent Ventresca, best known for portraying Darian Fox on sci-fi's The Invisible Man. I was a show that I really enjoyed. I had no idea he was so old. And Professor oh. Jack Reed on NBC's Boston Common. Ventresca is also known for his guest starring role as Fun Bobby on NBC's Friends. Oh. But he turns 58 today. I feel so old. I used to watch The Invisible Man. He was like a secret agent thing, you know, I got accidental superpowers, and now I've got to help the good guys fight the bad guys. Michelle Pfeiffer. <laughs> Who's that? Who knows? From Poison Ivy to... Michelle Pfeiffer, straight masterpiece. So, so from Poison Ivy to... Oh, gosh, Catwoman. Yeah! 
So it's, isn't that kind of funny though? That yeah, we yeah. got two Batman villains who are both uh, share birthday. Yeah. And she was also in What Lies Beneath, The Murder on the Orient Express. We saw that. Mm -hmm. And there's another Inspector Cluso. Wait. No. No. I forgot the oh, inspector's no. name. The car this what's little graces. Uh, all right. And the uh, yeah, I forgot. Uh, but anyway, yes. yeah, you can look it up. Look it up. Leave angry comments down below. Uh, and then uh, as Janet Van Dyne in Ant Man and the Wasp, and uh, she was also in the the previous one and in, in just Ant Man. Was she? Was she? In that, yeah, they they fought. No, no, she was in. Um, a Quantumania. Sorry, she was in Ant-Man yeah, and the, the Wasp, the, and she was in Quantumania. Yeah, that's that. That I mean, Quantumania is the one where she had the the biggest role. She turned sixty six today. And then, of course, we have Sir Daniel Day Lewis. Yeah, who they, is, uh, all the other things didn't mention he was uh, he'd been knighted. So it's like I gotta. Yeah, I did part. not know that. And as uh, he was in There Will Be Blood, that's one of my favorite movie titles. No, nah, I don't know what I'm not gonna. Go that. <laughs> but uh, Lincoln, he, Gangs he of New Lincoln. York. Oh, did he play Lincoln? He looks like he'd play a great Lincoln. The Last of the Mohicans. Uh, oh my goodness, yeah. that's one of the ebooks I downloaded. G Gangs of New York. Uh, he's like very, very prominent character in that as well. Ooh. So all, all, uh, all big roles. He's the main character in Last of the Mohicans as well. So all, yeah, all those were starring I roles. Was Kevin Costner. No, I think you're thinking Dances with Wolves. I am thinking of Dances with Wolves. <laughs> Darn. Like, I've never seen either mind. of these yet. Somehow I knew. <laughs> okay, and then of course, oh my gosh, I'm so excited yes! to mention this one, Kate Mulgrew. Because yeah. I think that's like a name. Uh, Kate Mulgrew. Uh, what is she been? Has she been in anything? I can't really think of anything. Oh, she, come on. she was Captain Catherine, yes! J Captain Catherine Janeway in Star Trek Voyager, as well as a Star Trek Prodigy, and Red in Orange is a New Black. Red because she was uh, her character was Russian and she had red hair. Oh, she had red okay. hair. And uh, oh my gosh, she was wonderful in Orange is a New Black. Definitely a standout character. But yeah, uh, oh, wait, I, wait, wait, wait. Uh, she turns. 69 today. Yeah. Nice. Nice. She's also very nice. As I, I really like the fact that she's like, the, as far as I know, she's like the first female uh, starship captain to be in such a prominent role. Yes. yes I mean, it, it, it might be that there were other female captains that showed up in like certain episodes, but she's the main character of the yeah, show. Yeah. She's So it's like, yeah, pretty awesome. Anyway, next... Uh, Jerry Seinfeld. Hey! Uh, from, uh, yeah, TV What's show. the deal with Jerry Seinfeld? You probably haven't heard of his TV show. It's a confusing title. It's Seinfeld. <laughs> He's also in B movie. Hey! On a plane. By all means, uh, a bee's wing shouldn't be able to produce yeah. flight. Comedians <laughs> in Cars Getting Coffee. Uh, comedians in Cars Getting Coffee. Yes. There you go. That's how you say it. And uh, CompuComp, The Magnificent, in Dilbert. Yeah, great, yeah. great cartoon show. Found out it's uh, all compiled uh, into one yeah, long yeah. video on YouTube. Yeah, it's too bad the, uh, the yeah. theater is kind of... But yeah. they, it's a, but yeah. a funny show is a funny show, right? Daniel Stern actually played uh, Dilbert. Interesting. It's one of those things where it's like you don't even realize uh, that it's him. And then you're like, oh, wait, yeah. Daniel Stern? Like oh, the, the okay, guy so... from from uh, Home Alone and uh, yeah. City Slickers? Yeah, yeah, that Daniel Stern? He was also in uh, many, uh, several episodes of... Uh, 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 oh, The Office Guys. Oh, what the hell is the name? Oh, uh, I know the one you're talking about. The Three Slacker Guys. Yeah, you know I'm a terrible person. Yeah, Why can okay. I think of the names? It's hot in here. Yes, exceedingly so. Wait, wait. Uh, he turns 70 years old today. Workaholics. Yes, that's it. Tommy James. Hercule Poirot is the name you couldn't think of yes, earlier. Yes, <laughs> so, thank you. Somehow it just came to me when you thought of uh, workaholics. Tommy James, singer of Tommy James and the Shondells is 77 today. Uh, he is best known for... Uh, oh, the, oh, the band is best the known. The band, for. yes. The band is best known for some of their titles. Money, Money. I, I assume that uh, that was what um, Billy Idol covered. Ah, and Crimson okay. and Clover which they played, I think, in an episode... Uh, like, that was one of the things they used in the trailer for a show I watched where there was a time loop. And oh. time it started, they played Crimson and Clover. Neat. Yeah. I like time loops. <laughs> oh, yeah. Time yeah. travel and time loops, I like them both. Okay, singer... And again, he turns... Uh, whatever age today. <laughs> Sorry, 77 today. Country singer Dwayne Allen of the Oak Ridge Boys. Um... Uh, 
Oh, okay. These are uh, best known as uh, for the song. Is that your song? Yes. Elvira, Bobby Sue. And probably lots of others. Yeah, lots of <laughs> others. Uh, it turns 81 today. The Oak Ridge Boys. You, you, you ask your grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> or parents. But yeah, yeah sure, possibly sure, sure, grandparents, sure. depending on uh, how... Singer Bob Miranda, The Happening. Uh, best known for the song See You in September and I Got Rhythm turns 82. Uh, this is one that everybody, I don't care if you don't know who this is, you've been living under a rock with no internet connection. <laughs> uh, it, Willie Nelson. Uh, yeah! Best known for so many things. Willie again, Nelson, such a great, great, great yeah, guy. Be impossible to name everything. The red headed stranger. With. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always on my mind, on the road again, blue eyes, crying in the rain. Uh, about a billion uh, guest starring appearances on TV shows like Monk. Yeah, uh, Monk! Yeah, it's, Great show! See, I mean, this guy's There's a whole prolific. episode dedicated to him in that. 1990, he's 91. I didn't invert it. 91 years old. Oh, you even mentioned guest Yeah, I, I, I thought you were reading that. it. No, I just read it off the That was one of okay. the... Okay, anyway. I wasn't sure if you'd uh, think of it, but... Uh, Dale Earnhardt. Uh, All right, uh, so that is for those that oh, are yes, alive. Yes, yes, these, these are the posthumous uh, yes. happy birthdays here. Uh, Dale Earnhardt over the... the senior. Uh, Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Dale Earnhardt Sr. Uh, he was, uh, oh, gosh, do you want the dates? Or I'm never sure. Yeah, uh, uh, tell me, tell them how old he okay, was. He and was, how old uh, okay, he well, was. he was born in 1951, and, oh, this is an easy one, and then he died in 2001. Um, uh, before his birthday, though. Yeah, so he was, he would have been 50, but he would have been 51 had he lived long enough to get to his birthday. Uh, over the course of his driving career, Earnhardt earned 670... That's insane. Oh, entered. He entered. Yeah. Uh, 676 Winston Cup races, 176 of them. That sounds like it's a very little, but yeah, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, I won exactly zero. So yeah, I, exactly. <laughs> and, um, and plus, you know, how many times did he come in second or third? Yeah, um, more than likely. He and he amasses more than $40 million in prize money. Wow. Yeah. Well, good for him. Or his family. <laughs> yeah, and his son uh, ended up becoming a big race car driver as well. Yes, yes. You um, probably, like, you've either heard of him or heard of his son, if you've heard okay. anything about Leslie him. Leslie Jordan. Uh, he was uh, born in 1955. He died in 2022. Uh, he wow, was a writer of. Yeah, yeah, not too long ago. I remember this being in the news. Uh, a writer and TV actor received Emmy Awards for his role as Ber Beverly Leslie. On the hit series Will and Grace, um, he's been in a few things too. He was also in that Lego, uh, was it Build Masters or whatever they call that? Oh yeah, Lego that's show. right. Yeah, he was. He was. Um, wow. I, okay. I think that was uh, right before he passed away. It must actually. have been like the last thing he did. Then. I think. I think it is. Um, I, they might have even had a like an honor of him thing at the end because uh, I didn't know uh, know about him. But anyhow, uh, he would have been. Uh, how... about, he would have been sixty-seven. Uh, if he were still alive, to, so, oh, I'm sorry. If he would, he was 67 when he passed. He would have been 69 if he made, uh, made it to okay. this year. All right. And then we got Emperor Hiro. Uh, I'm sorry, Emperor Hirohito. He was born in 1901 and he died in 1989. Yeah, wow. lived a long life. He got to see a lot of change. Uh, posthumously honored as Emperor Showa, the 124th Emperor of Japan. Reigning from reigning from 1926 until his death in 1989. Wow, so is that uh, uh, 63 years? Um, he was one of the longest reigning monarchs in the in the world. With his, oh, 62 years because <laughs> he was, didn't make it to the anniversary date. Ah, okay. uh, with his reign of 62 years being the longest of any Japanese emperor. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Showa era. Uh, oh, Showa era. Era. Yeah, if I can yes. speak. Uh, apparently was named after him. I, I'm, I'm not entirely certain of, like, like maybe his full name is uh, Hirohito Showa, uh, yeah, but it didn't that, say it. Just said it like, he's it, just a, got a mononym on there. So yeah, I man, if, you're, if you're into, uh, like, Japanese, especially, like, Tokusatsu or, like, uh, Gojira, um, Showa and Heisei come yes. up quite a bit. Precisely, so there you go. I'm definitely more of a fan of the Showa era writers, <laughs> but the Heisei's fun, too, but it's all, like, lights and flashing. Ah. Uh, Okay. You know, it's a little too but, much. But yeah, he was, uh, he would have been 88 if he made it to his, uh, oh yeah, he actually would have been 88 um, at the time of his, uh, oh, sorry, or 87 yeah. if he had made it to his birthday, he would have been 88. 
uh, which would put him at, uh, what year is it again? 2024. <laughs> That would have put him at uh, 123 years old today. If, if he were somehow alive today, yes. Yeah, yeah. Can you believe but that? yeah, it, it's one of those things where it's like, I've heard this name before. I assumed it was like way long ago, but it's like, hey, he was alive in my lifetime. And yeah. he was ruling during my lifetime. He yeah. ruled right up until he died. So that's that's just blows my mind when I found, that, found out that. Um, but yeah. Um, then we... Next, we got uh, Duke yeah. Ellington. He was born in nineteen, or sorry, eighteen ninety nine. Yeah. Man, we haven't covered one. <laughs> born in the last century, eighteen ninety nine. Two centuries ago. Yeah, and the, oh yeah, and then he <laughs> died in nineteen seventy four. Uh, he was the greatest jazz composer and band leader of his time, possibly all time. Honestly, one of the originators of big band jazz. He led his band for more than fifty years. And composed thousands of scores. Uh, gosh, so that would put him, he would have been, if he made it to his birthday that year, he would have been 75 years uh, he old. Did. Oh, he did? He died in May. Oh, okay. He, uh, 19, oh, that's right. <laughs> I forgot what month it was. 75 years old, and if uh, he were still alive today, he would be, uh, oh my gosh, sorry, give me a second, 125 years old. <laughs> he almost made it, Duke. Uh, you can also see him as a ghost on uh, Big Mouth. He lives in uh, the, the the main character's attic, and he's voiced, I believe, by Jordan Peele. Ah, uh, yeah, that would make sense. Uh, okay, then you've got William Randolph Hearst. Uh, he was born in 1963. Uh, oh. And he died in 1951. Uh, William Randolph Hearst Sr. was an American businessman, newspaper publisher, and politician known for developing the nation's largest newspaper chain and media company, Hearst Communications. Okay, okay. So he would have been... Wow, he actually did... He had a pretty good run. Uh, he would have been 90... Sorry, 80. <laughs> oh my gosh, 88. So he was 88, wow. Yeah, he would have been 88 years old uh, at the time of his death. But if he were alive today, uh, he would be... Uh, oh my gosh, 161. <laughs> Almost made it. Yeah, almost. So close. So close. <laughs> Seven more Still years. your joke here. But anyhow, yeah, so those are all the famous people that were born on uh, your birthday, if you have your birthday today. Okay, so, so that's it. And uh, so we have our moments in history. Uh, starting in 1429, Joan of Arc arrives at the Siege of Orléans. In uh, 1553, Flemish women are introduced to the practice of starching linen into England. Yeah, yeah, they're always trying to clear their throat, those Flemish women. <laughs> In 1672, the Franco-Dutch War, uh, Louis XIV of France invades the Netherlands. In uh, 1701, uh, Drenthe, Netherlands adopts Gregorian calendar, which made tomorrow May 12th, 1701. I hate them, Gregory. I hate them. You'll never guess that one. <laughs> yeah. <it's... laughs> That's mostly for me. Okay. The quote I have rolling around in my head. In 1707, uh, English and Scottish parliaments accept the Act of Union, uh, creates the United Kingdom of Great Britain, and comes into being on May 1st. Wow. It's always weird for me to think of something like that. That's always been there from my perspective. Be right? Like, you mean it had its beginning? Uh, let's see. In, uh, let's see where we're there. Uh, in 1715, English astronomer John uh, Flamsteed observes the Uranus for the sixth time. <laughs> Or is it Uranus? Yeah, yeah, that's that's what he tells you. Oh, it was only the sixth time I did it, you know. <laughs> in uh, 1769, a Scottish engineer nice. James Watts patent for a steam engine with a separate condenser is enrolled, what? and it is patent number three nine nine hundred and thirteen. What? Yes. In 1781, a French fleet occupies uh, Tobago during American War of Independence. Is it Tobago or Tobago? Also on that day, uh, French fleet stops uh, Britain from seizing the Cape of Good Hope. In 1813, uh, the first U.S. rubber patent is granted to Jacob F. Hummel. Or is it Hummel? Yeah, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you. And I just know that uh, thanks to him, we're uh, able to say... Uh, I'm rubber and you're glue, and uh, I wonder if you ever had a rivalry with a glue factory. That would be interesting. 
it, it, we never know. You never know. The these phrases have uh, weird origins. Yeah. It could actually be uh, what what's what created that phrase. Uh, in 1845, uh, Macon B. Allen and Robert Morris Jr. are the first African Americans to open a law practice in the United States. That is amazing. I honestly didn't think it would have happened that soon. In 18 soon, I use that term loosely. In 1852, uh, the first edition of uh, Pete, Peter Roger's Thesaurus is published in Great Britain. I used to love thesauruses. I'd actually just sit and flip through them randomly because I was a weird kid. Uh, in 1854, uh, Ashman Institute, later Lincoln University, uh, in Hinsonville, Pennsylvania, receives its uh, charter from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, making it the first degree granting a black college in the United States. Uh, in 1861, uh, Maryland's House of Delegates votes against seceding from the Union. This happened uh, during the U.S. Civil War. So yeah. Both of those things happened, uh, you know, before the Civil War was over. So that's even more incredible. Uh, in 1872, Jesse James's gang robs a bank of $1,500 in Columbia, Kentucky. Just let him go. It's only $1,500. <laughs> hey, they're insured. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure in that day it was like stealing 15000 or, so, or, or so. Or like probably $1.5 million. Oh, yeah, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Who knows? 1882, Who knows? the Electro, the Electromoat uh, forerunner of the trolley bus is tested by Werner von Simons in Berlin. Did I get yeah, that? Yeah. Did I think it's actually right? pronounced Simmons. Uh, Simmons. Uh, Werner von Simmons. Yeah, I know it's spelled the way, well, that's how we would say it in English. In 1886, the first public Dutch electricity service begins. That is wild. In 1892, Charles Riley is baseball's first pinch hitter. Yeah, 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 yeah. He would pinch you and then punch you. <laughs> it's, 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 and then after that, he'd be like, let's play, let's play ball. Isn't punt a big uh, football term, though? Yeah, punch. <laughs> oh, you said punch. Okay. Punch. Like a punch In button. 1912, uh, 108 degrees Fahrenheit or 42 degrees Celsius uh, is recorded in uh, Google Goral. Philippines uh, and is the Oceania record. Yeah, my apologies to my family for slightly mispronouncing that one. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, uh, thank you for yeah, I'll take jumping on that land that and uh, <laughs> that uh, grenade for me. In uh, 1926, France and U.S. reach accord on repayment of World War I. Still owes us money, I believe. Uh, in 1927, uh, construction <laughs> of Spirit of St. Louis, the monoplane, which Charles Lindbergh was to fly across the Atlantic, is completed. The kissing plane. Mo mono plane. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for thank you for clearing that up. Um, 1930, a telephone connection between Britain and Australia goes into service. Yeah. How wild is that? I know. Right? right? Yeah, 1930. It wasn't uh, so unimaginably long ago. There's potentially like less than a century. Yeah, potentially someone was alive when there was no connection. <laughs> Like, that is, that's just wild to yeah. me. Uh, in 1932, the first broadcast of One Man's Family on NBC Radio, the longest-running dramatic serial on U.S. radio, and it ended in 1959. So how many years was that? Oh, my gosh, that is 27 years. 27 years. I, I mean, granted, there are TV shows that have been on longer than that, yeah, but, but this not was, many. Not this many. was, this, this was, like, Unimaginable uh, to think about, like yeah. a radio program that lasted that long, or was in continuous, or you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, in uh, 1936, uh, the first pro baseball game in Japan is played. Uh, Nagoya defeats uh, Dai Tokyo eight to five. <laughs> That's really cool. So, yeah. And then, uh, and then when did they throw Colonel Sanders into the line? And then, <laughs> that real thing, look it up. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, they got it back. It's one of those cool. things. It's like you watch all those uh, animes and they play baseball. And it's like, uh, yeah. Uh, baseball's an American sport. Why are they playing baseball? It's like, no, Japan, Japan's apparently been playing baseball since 1936. Yeah. Uh, in 1937, a uh, symbolic golden rivet is completing uh, the Golden Gate Bridge connecting San Francisco and Marin County is driven, later replaced with a more structurally sound steel version. <laughs> good, so, yeah. good idea. <laughs> also good preventing idea. someone from stealing it. Yes, this is true. Oh my gosh, can you imagine? 
Somebody stole the golden bolt, and now the bridge collapsed. <laughs> anyway, uh, in 1939, a Whitestone Bridge connecting New York Borough of Bronx and Queens opens. Yeah, kind of crazy. Uh, they ended up doing that in the same day, uh, or uh, two years later. Yeah, yeah, it is, that is pretty good. That's pretty wild. I was up there not too long ago in that area. In uh, 1945, a uh, conscientious objector, Desmond Doss, saves 75 wounded soldiers in the Battle of Okinawa at Hacksaw Ridge, later depicted in the Oscar winning film Hacksaw Ridge. Very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, 1953, the Six Cons Film Festival, The Wages of Fear, directed by Henri Georges Clouzot, uh, wins the Grand Prix du Festival International du Film. Oh, yeah, that's where... Uh, I and just... I'm sure I, I butchered at least some of that French, but yeah, yeah, uh, hey, all my French-speaking uh, viewers, I uh, feel free Mr. To, Bean going to, to tell me. Uh, in 1953, it was at uh, all same year, uh, the first U.S. experimental 3D TV broadcast showed an episode of Space Patrol on Los Angeles ABC affiliate. That is wild to me that they tried to air something on television. I mean, it, it's happened. You get the 3D glasses and all that together, but... Wild, wild. And then in 1961, ABC's The Wide World of Sports debuts. Ah. The thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. Pretty well, sure yeah, that's where that phrase is from. My feet get pretty agonized sometimes. Uh, in 1962, the 16th Tony Awards, A Man for All Seasons, which is a play, and How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying, musical, uh, win. Uh, in 1965, a Canadian folk singer-songwriter uh, Joni Anderson, soon to be known as uh, Joni Mitchell, uh, meets American folk singer and future husband Chuck Mitchell at a gig in Toronto, Ontario. Mitchell! I it, 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 it. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, in uh, 1967, Aretha Franklin releases her single, Respect, written by Otis Redding and Billboard Song of the Year of 1967. You know how you spell respect, Sakanko? R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Find out what it means to me. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. A bunch of words I don't really know. Suck it to me, 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 suck it to me. Oh, a little respect. Just a little bit. A little bit more. Leave your comments. Uh, should, which song should we sing? The, the store I work for licensed that song for a while, and we played it over and over again. Just a section of it, because they paid so much to get the royalties. They had to get their money. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, in uh, 1968, uh, Galt McDermott, uh, Jerome uh, Ragney, and James Arado's hippie musical Hair opens in Biltmore Theater, New York City, and runs for 1,750 performances. Oh, my gosh. That is wow. insane. Can you imagine if one dude was in all of those? <laughs> hope, you, hope you caught it before it was gone. <laughs> Anyhow. Should have done more. In uh, 1971, uh, Boeing receives contract for a Mariner 10 Mercury exploration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder what they're up to these days. Hmm. Anyhow, in 1974, U.S. President Richard Nixon said he will release the edited tapes made in the White House. wonder how that worked out for him. <laughs> yeah, oh, here's the edited tapes. Uh, also, by the way, everybody said, you ever see his resignation uh, paper? It basically just said... Did he, did he say he was not a crook? <laughs> no, people, basically all it says is, I, Richard Nixon, the President of the United States, hereby... Uh, I resign my position as president effective immediately or something like that. Okay. And that was it. It was total bare bones, admitted to nothing. All right, good for him. <laughs> uh, 1975, Vietnam War, the U.S. begins to evacuate its citizens from Saigon in Operation a Frequent Wind in response to advancing North Vietnamese forces, bringing an end to the U.S. involvement in the war. All right. All right. L leaving. I like it. Uh, 1977, uh, British Aerospace Forms. Yeah, yeah. Wonder what, what did they ever do? Yeah, I wonder. I mean, what did they... I, 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 I honestly agree. I, I wonder I what have, they did. Like, what did they... All I know is that they sent these two astronauts, uh, one walrus and their partner Gromit, to the moon. But outside of that, I don't know what else they've done. Yes, yes. Uh, 1983, Harold Washington swore in as Chicago's <laughs> first African-American mayor. Man, took long enough, huh? Yeah, too long. In uh, 1985, uh, the 17th NASA Space Shuttle Mission uh, 51B Challenger 7 launches. 
very nice. Also on the same day, uh, New York Yankees fire manager Yogi Berra. 16 games into the season, despite assurance from owner George Steinbrenner. That's, that's that George's he, boss. Yes. Well, George Steinbrenner is George's George boss? George Costanza's okay, boss. That he would be kept for the whole season. Billy Martin named as replacement. Only uh, in America. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder why uh, why that happened. That's kind you of know crazy. what? No, nobody ever goes there because uh, it's always too crowded. Ah, yes, yeah, very good yogiism. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, another good good one is uh, Hey Boo Boo. How about you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gotta get those uh, picnic the baskets. baskets. <laughs> no, yeah, di- I different, don't know, Yogi. Different Yogi. <laughs> uh, in uh, 1986, good year. Uh, Boston Red Sox Roger Clemens strikes out 20 Seattle Mariners. Yeah, and then after that, they played some baseball. <laughs> was doing a bar then the uh, same day, uh, an NFL draft, Auburn running back Bo Jackson is first pick by Tim of A. Buccaneers. You don't know Bo. as an old ad campaign, probably before your time. It literally was, just uh, a few days. Ah. Uh. <laughs> uh, what was it? Uh, it's still around. Like too. 11 days, I think, right? Anyhow. Uh, Next is uh, 1987, Japan's premier, uh, Nakasone, visits the United States. Uh, 1990, a wrecking cranes begin tearing down the Berlin Wall in, at the Brandenburg Gate. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Uh, you could have said that a little more gravitas. I'm sorry, I can't. I'm not <laughs> as good as it. As <laughs> Mr. Gorbachev, tear down. Uh, like, Tear down this wall. Mr. Gorbachev, oh, tear good. down this wall. Oh, okay, that's bad. That's so good. I actually saw a piece of it at, um, the, what's a military base? Um, oh, my gosh, it's a really popular military academy. N- nor- north, uh, uh, something point? West Point? That's it. <laughs> Wrong <laughs> compass direction. I, we went there on a field trip, and they had a, a portion of it, and had some graffiti, uh, mm-hmm. some uh, German graffiti. It was fascinating. Uh, in 1991, uh, Don't Rock the Jukebox, single uh, released by Alan Jackson, the ASCAP Award uh, Country Song of the Year in 1992, and Billboard Song of the Year for 1991. But yeah, uh, I hope there wasn't anything uh, too inflammatory uh, in that graffiti uh, for kids to see. No, it, it, the portion that they had was just like a drawing and some it had oh, like a it, word or two. Was it a Kilroy? A little, it might have been, honestly. A guy peeking it over actually the wall. Might have been, <laughs> it, there wasn't a whole lot to it. It was mostly just a big thing of concrete mm-hmm. and all broken up. So, I mean, uh, anybody could have probably faked that. They just oh, gosh, yeah. make some, they, they they put well some concrete, put stuck some rebars out of it, and yeah, put a I little mean, graffiti on it. Like, yeah, this is a piece of Berlin wall. No, 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 really. We, <laughs> we got outside one imported. of it being from West Point, I, <laughs> right? I would say if it were anywhere else, yeah. I'd be like, yeah, that's not real. Yeah. Even, would... if, it, even if I saw him bring it here from Germany, <laughs> I'd be like, no. Nah. Yeah. So anyhow, in 1992, uh, voting ends on the choice of Elvis Presley postage stamp. Yeah, I remember being there. My mom, uh, I think, was part of that. And uh, then she bought a whole bunch of the stamps they did make. So uh, probably still has a couple in a bit. So, she tried to save them, but then ended up do, using them. Do you know uh, Elvis was alive at the time? Oh, gosh, no. No, no, no he was no. okay. He, he died long okay. before then. Because I was like uh, wondering why uh, there was like a whole hullabaloo about putting him on there. Because I know that the, one of the things is uh, put it, we don't put living people on postage stamps. Oh yeah, no, no. It, they had multiple versions of. Oh, Elvis I was choosing Presley. what what picture? Yeah, they were okay. like, should we put old Elvis Presley or should we put young Elvis ah, Presley? That's what it was for. Because I definitely remember seeing the stamp. Because yeah, uh, whenever you they, went to the post office, there'd be pictures of it. Yeah. Oh yeah, they would have it on it the walls. And really stuff. big advertising. They decided to go with a, a slightly older, but not like uh, just before. So his right death. in the middle. Yeah, they they wanted to get him at his prime. That's what they ended up going with. All right. Yeah. Uh, then in 1995, the final TV broadcast of Empty Nest on NBC TV. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I, I watched it a little bit. It had uh, it's. Of course, no. you did. You're a bird. Yeah, because <laughs> a nest. Uh, but uh, the main one of the main characters was Richard Mulligan. He was also uh, one of the Burt Campbell in Soap, which was a uh, it was an old soap opera. I was gonna comedy. say it sounds like it probably is a yeah, soap it, opera. Yeah, it, it had Billy Crystal. Um, the guy that played Mona, uh, the woman <laughs> that played Mona. That'd be kind of weird. Boss. The guy that played Mona. I forgot what her name was. Um, oh gosh, you know, uh, uh, oh the girl, uh, Alyssa Milano. So, uh, no wait, now I'm mixing shows together. Oh, <laughs> but right. Richard Mulligan, he was so much fun. He he died like 24 years ago though. So, all right. 
so next we have in 1990, also 1995, the longest sausage ever at 28.77 miles. It is made in Kitchener, Ontario. Weird it doesn't have it in, uh, in metric. But oh, anyhow, yeah. uh, that's, that's, that's an easy one. I uh, sign here, I sign up for sausage. Because it's really. Oh, nice. that's how you do it. Hot you do dog it is little, or is little, but sausage has multiple links. Ah. There you go. But yeah, that that is crazy to even like comprehend. Like, can you can you even imagine a twenty eight in and change mile long sausage? Yeah, I'd take the word for like it. Like, how long would it take you to drive twenty eight miles? I, I know. They, they stretch it out and just coil it up like a big old co brown coil snake. Yeah, it, uh, that is a good question. Like, was it like all? Was it I, measured, straightened out? Uh, I mean, it would be cool if they straightened but I guess it, it out, must... but I'm, I'm going to guess that they had it coiled up at yeah. least partially. Uh, so yeah, in 2002, the United States is re-elected to the United Nations Commission on Human Rights one year after losing the seat it had held for 50 years. Yeah, yeah. Where wonder is... what they did to get uh, to lose it then. Yeah, and I wonder what what where we are now with the. Yeah, that is a good question. Right, but, uh, 2002? Well, yeah, 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 yeah. presuming that we yeah, still are there. There are some things that have happened politically that, uh, but anyway. In 2004, Oldsmobile uh, builds its final car, ending 107 years of production. That so is I, wild. I, had not, I was not aware that Oldsmobile was oh, yeah. uh, out of business. Yeah, Oldsmobile 2004. I think Pontiac was like 2007. Saturn was like 2009. They were all like on top of each other. Mom used to have a 1988 <laughs> Cutlass uh, Sierra. Um, uh, Cutlass Supreme? Yeah, yeah, that Cutlass Supreme, like a Tenacious D. That was an Oldsmobile. And, uh, uh, gosh, and what was the other one? Oh, yeah, yeah, and my, my friend Sarah used to drive an Oldsmobile Alero. It was one of the one of the last models of car they made. All right. Pretty cool. And in 2015, uh, German measles is declared eradicated from the North and South America, first world region to do so. Very nice. And then he became a playable character in Fortnite. Measles. Oh, measles. <laughs> Meowzles. <laughs> Apologies for the notification sounds. In 2016, H-O-L-Y, single released by Florida Georgia Line. Billboard Song of the Year for 2016. Also on this day, uh, Canadian uh, musician Drake releases Views, his fourth studio album. He does not turn into like an Allosaurus or anything, I've been told. He's not that Drake. He's not ex-Drake. <laughs> He's still just regular Drake. Yes. Uh, 2018 animated series The Simpsons. Y'all, you've all heard of that show, right? Uh, surpasses 635 episode count of Gunsmoke, the highest number of episodes of any series on TV. Yes, and now that I think about it, do you remember them bringing this up? And the Simpsons is like, all right, cool, we beat the episode count, but now we want to beat the runtime. Oh, really? Because Gunsmoke was like an hour long, I believe. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I could be wrong about that. But I think that the episodes anyway, at least at the time, were long. They, they had more actual screen time. Okay. So... I gotta look. I should look into that. And uh, also in 2018, uh, Sweden's official Twitter account confirms Swedish meatballs actually originated in Turkey. Oh, uh, I used to. Love so they should be Turkish meatballs, apparently. I used to see those and I'd be like, "Ew, gross!" And then I would like fill my plate with them because I, they are so wonderful. Oh, we had some for my birthday last year. We went to IKEA. Oh my gosh! Well, I ate the fake ones. In 2019, Indonesia announces plans to relocate its capital from Jakarta due to the city sinking, according to government minister. That is insane. <laughs> that is insane. The only thing I knew about Indonesia beforehand is Generation 2 Megatron was made there. <laughs> okay. It's so weird. Everything else was like in China, but All, Megatron also, was made in Indonesia. Also in 2019, a Sports Illustrated features a Muslim model... Uh, Halima Adin in a burkini uh, for the first time in their swimsuit edition. Awesome. Progress. Like right. it. And 2020, a world record for the longest single lightning flash of 477 miles or 768 kilometers across U.S. states of Texas, Louisiana, and Mississippi, according to World Meteorological Organization. It's hard, hard to just even fathom a lightning bolt being that big. Yeah. Or how you would even have measured something like that. I, I would say that that length, in fact, I was so surprised I would call it shocking. Indeed. Uh, then in 2021, uh, U.S. President Joe Biden and First Lady Jill Biden visit former President Jimmy Carter and former First Lady Rosalind Carter at the Carter's home in Plains, Georgia. 
Carter, uh, six, 96 years old, did not attend Biden's inauguration due to health concerns. Yeah, that is wild to me that they were both still alive. I, I don't know where they're at right now, but, like, I know that Carter's still building houses for is Habitat really? of Humanity. Yeah, he's still going to construction sites. And I don't know how much he does, but I know he is hands-on. He definitely tries. I remember he showed up in an episode of King of the Hill. Ah, yeah. He class act, let me tell you. And in 2021, our world's longest pedestrian bridge at 516 meters, or 1,700 feet, opens inside northern Portugal's uh, Aruca Geo Park. No idea what that is, but uh, world's longest. Yeah, that's pretty wild. In, uh, Almost 20, a mile. In uh, 2022, the world's longest glass-bottomed bridge, the Bok Long, or White Dragon, is 632 oh. meters long, opens in Mok Chao Island Mountain Park and Resort in Vietnam. That is what I've, I have been, like, that's one of those things I'd love to visit one, but I know that once it was before me, I would be like, no, that's okay, I'm good. <laughs> I see yeah, people crawl across those in fear, and I'm like, I get it. I absolutely get yeah. that. Like, I, I would say, like, I have the great, like, fear of heights is not, like, something that I would rank as, like, one of the highest things I'm afraid of, but... Yeah, uh, I'd probably have I'd probably have some trepidations. Yeah, yeah, I I bring one of those little emergency glass magic <laughs> hammers with me just in case I I felt too confined and I wanted to get out of there. <laughs> and finally, in 2023, country singer Willie Nelson hosts the first of two night 90th birthday concerts for himself at the Hollywood Bowl in Los Angeles, California. Guest performances include Lyle Lovett, Neil Young, Snoop Dogg, George Strait, Roseanne Cash. Chris Christopherson, Nora Jones, Chris Stapleton, Beck, Eddie Brickle, uh, Tom Jones, and Ziggy Marley, among many others. Wow, that is an amazing list. Yes. There. We got Tom Jones still, uh, I mean, it's not a, to have him there, it's not unusual. Let's <laughs> see what you do there. All right, so yeah, that, that's it for all this uh, points in history. And uh, once again, One I hope. Now is another point, and it's also now it's in history. Yes. <laughs> Alrighty. So yeah, again, if if it was your birthday today, hope you had a, a wonderful birthday. Hope you enjoyed the video. And if you'd like me to make a birthday video for you, leave it in the comments below. And again, if you if there are any songs you want us to sing uh, for you, you know, you leave your comments. You think you heard anything we said uh, was it factually inaccurate or mispronounced? Be sure to let us know. And uh, we'll see you uh, next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. What are you still doing here? It's over. Ah, uh, nice, nice, uh, nice reference there. Uh-oh, I can't find the cursor. I can't find the cursor. It left it right there. There it is. There you go. Bye.